Once I run to you, now I run from you. This tainted love you've given, I give you all a boy could give you. Take my tears, and that's not nearly all. Mike Burns is in his battered hatchback, harmonising off key to soft sell. He's on his way to pick up Antonio Vicenzo's latest CD. It's for his mum whose birthday is in three days. She adores the Italian crooner. Her taste in music sure has changed since I was growing up, he thinks. Afterwards, he's going to treat himself to a couple of double cheeseburgers for lunch. He can't really afford it on his benefit money, but he justifies it by telling himself he doesn't get out much. The song reaches a crescendo as he pulls into the shopping centre car park. Don't touch me, please, Mike yells. I cannot stand the... The DJ suddenly interrupts, announcing a breaking news bulletin. Annoyed, Mike looks down to switch radio channels and does not notice the car in front that has stopped abruptly. Crash! Oh, shit. Sighing heavily, Mike gets out of his vehicle to check the damage as the driver of the car he just hit does the same. She looks furious. Fuck's sake, mate. Don't you look where you're going. Mike mumbles, disquieted by this petite yet tempestuous spitfire. Sorry, I didn't see you had, had stopped. She closes her eyes and shakes her head. You should open your bloody eyes then. She holds up a hand adorned in a multitude of silver rings and now varnished in black. Hang on, I'll take some photos, then we'll better move the cars because we're causing a jam. She pulls her phone from her pocket and starts snapping away. I'll meet you at the entrance door. Don't even think about driving off. She warns as she tosses the phone onto the passenger seat and gets back into the car. Mike slumps back into his own car and reads the bumper stickers on the car as she drives away. Equality. Eat organic. We're all in this together. A few minutes later, Mike is standing at the door and waiting nervously. What he sees first are the bright red clumpy boots purposefully striding straight towards him. As his gaze lifts to her face, he is met with a glare that could kill. His heart quickens. He hates confrontation and she looks like she would tear a strip off of him. So it comes as a surprise when he hears an even, calm voice. Sorry I yelled. She brushes breeze-blown, glossy black hair away from her face. That's not going to help at all. What's done is done, and that's why we have insurance, isn't it? Mike gulps and nods. Ooh. So, I'm Amber. You are. The woman thrusts her hand out. Um, I'm Michael? Mike? He grips her hand. Hi, Mike. Right, let's find somewhere to sit and sort this all out, shall we? Amber turns to take a step towards the door, but Mike stops her. An old lady, wheezing heavily into a scarf, shuffles by quickly, hardly noticing the pair in her path. When Amber asks if she's OK, the old lady dismisses her with a wave of a gnarled hand. In a great commotion, the entrance door suddenly bursts open. A child flies through, missing the old lady by a shred. An overweight security guard follows, yelling at the girl to stop. He bumps into the old lady and reflexively reaches out to stop her from falling as she tumbles forwards into him. Ow! What the hell? She bit me! The guard yells. Amber and Mike look at each other in disbelief as a second security guard races through the door. He's faster than the first and Amber and Mike barely have time to step out of the way before he has the child firmly in his grip and is marching back towards the centre. Stop dancing with a biddy, Stu. I've got the little shit here. Stu! Stu looks at his colleague helplessly, blood pouring from the wound on his ample stomach. She bit me, Trev! He says weakly before fainting. Rolling his eyes, Trevor pulls the girl along. Come on then, let's get you looked in the office. Then we'll see about him. Amber and Mike find a bench just opposite the music store Mike was planning to visit, where they can sit and exchange details. Mike's trying to pluck up the courage to offer to buy them both a coffee, but he's scared she'll think that he's coming on to her. She's very unattractive in an unconventional way. 
but Mike knows that Amber is way out of his league. Mike opens his mouth, the suggestion ready to be articulated, when the security guard walks out of the music store and back towards the car park, reminding them both of what happened. What was that all about? Mike asks. I know, right? Crazy lady. I wonder why she bit him. Amber shakes her head. People are so strange. Mike nods. You're not wrong there. Did that security guy come back in? The one who got bitten, I mean. He hit the deck hard when he fainted. Maybe we should have done something. Amber looks her companion dead in the eye. Not my circus, not my monkeys. Echoes of whooping and hollering came from the further in the precinct. Ugh, kids messing around, Amber thinks. This is why she never comes shopping on a Saturday. But work has been so busy lately that this was her only free day. She stands up and offers her hand again. Well, that's my cue to leave. I can't stand stupid kids. I've got your details. I'll be in touch if I need anything for the claim. Mike shakes Amber's hand, mentally kicking himself for being such a wimp. Externally, he smiles though. I'm, I'm truly sorry for wrecking your car. I hope your afternoon gets better. Amber nods and walks morosely in the direction of the noisy kids. Moments later, Mike is at the back of the music shop searching for the Antonio Vicenzo CD. He can hear the kid who'd been collared kicking off in the back room. She sounds furious and is thumping away at the door. He smiles to himself. Well kid, that's what you get for breaking the law. He wishes someone would kick those noisy kids out. They're getting louder and closer. He glances out the open frontage of the shop and spots Amber hurrying towards the car park. She must have had enough of the noise too. He surmises. A piercing scream cuts through the teenage cacophony and is accompanied by sound of running footsteps. The security guard comes thundering towards the shop, shouting to the assistant. Get that shutter down quickly! Shoppers are running, screaming, shouting, filling the precinct with chaos. Some of them are dripping with blood as they lunge at the fleeing crowd, attacking those they can catch. In here! Now! The security guard is shouting at people trying to escape the pandemonium. The shopper assistant is desperately trying to close the shutter, but it can only descend at a rate commensurate with its motor's built-in safety devices. He presses the key as far right as possible, bouncing his body as he wheels it to move faster. More people run into the shop to safety, ducking under the half-closed shutter. Amber is one of them, wide-eyed and pow and breathless. The shutter is two-thirds of the way down when a bloodied figure steps out of the thrashing crowd and looks at the store full of people. It roars and starts to run towards them. The assistant nearly flees, but panic holds him there, turning the key harder and harder as the shutter continues its leisurely descent. A young mother appears behind the monstrosity, rushing the store. She is carrying a small, wriggling baby wrapped in a yellow blanket. She looks terrified. The crazed mob turns to her as one, moaning and screeching. She runs towards the music shop, racing the shutter that suddenly decides it might pick up the pace a bit now. Amber sucks in her breath, hoping the woman will make it, but knowing she won't, she widens her eyes in horror as she watches the mother bend down and slide the yellow bundle as hard as she can under the last three feet of shutter and into the store. The mob floods in around the shrieking woman and swallows her up. The relentless attacker ignores the throng behind him and focuses on the fresh prey before him. He launches into the shutter, snarling and hurling, determined to go through the metal. The impact triggers the brake mechanism in the shutter and it stops with 18 inches to go. In the store, the group instinctively backs away as the attacker notices and begins to bend.